What's going on, everybody? Well, we are just about two weeks into the new year. If you did not see, about two or three days ago, I dropped my big, massive end-of-the-year ranking, all 121 films that I saw in 2023, ranked worst to best. It was just short of a four-hour video, so if you're interested and you have the time, please check that out. But now that we officially have all of the discussion of 2023 behind us in the rearview mirror. It's time to start looking forward to the future, or I guess I should say the present. I'm a little behind on this video. And today we're going to talk about my top 10 most anticipated films of 2024. Now, I'm sure a lot of movies that are going to end up being my favorites of the year, I don't even know about yet. That's how it goes. You only really know about the big blockbusters, the couple of horror releases, some of the comic book films, and a lot of the smaller movies, more independent films, or films that just haven't gotten an official release date yet. We'll find out about those throughout the year. But for the movies that we do know about, we have trailers, we have posters, we have synopsises, anything that I can go on. These are the ones that are interesting me the most. I do have a couple of honorable mentions because I, I could have easily done a top 20, but wanted to stick to a top 10. Uh, Argyle is something that's coming out very soon. I don't know if I'm going to be able to review it the weekend it releases because I'll actually be in Orlando at Megacon, which, by the way, if you're going to be in Orlando, if you're near Orlando, or if you just love Megacon, definitely let me know that you're going to be on the way. Uh, me, Sean Chandler, a few others are going to be doing multiple panels over that four-day weekend. But uh, Argyle is something that's Matthew Vaughn's directing. It's got a little bit of like a a meta flavor to it where you're seeing the story of the secret agent played by Henry Cavill. And then you got Bryce Dallas Howard, who's actually the author of the story that Henry Cavill stars in. You got Sam Rockwell in there. I can't quite grasp exactly what the movie's about from the trailer. It's a little confusing, but it's got a bunch of people I like involved with it, and it seems fun. You have Abigail, which we just got the trailer for maybe a week ago. This little vampire movie starring Melissa Barrera from Scream 5 and 6 and not 7. And, uh, you know, I'm a vampire guy. You'll find out about that even more later throughout this list. And the premise seems cool, although I wish the trailer didn't show quite as much as it did. I feel like I've seen the whole movie. A Quiet Place Part 1. I love the first one. I like the second one even more. Even though this one is a spinoff, it's not following the, the Krasinski family. I'm still curious exactly what it is going to be because I really like this world. Ballerina, which is a spinoff of John Wick. It stars Anna de Armas, and it's being directed by Len Wiseman. Now, that last part turns a lot of people off. It actually interests me. I like Len Wiseman. I think that he's a very underappreciated director. I really enjoy his two underworld films. I love Live Free or Die Hard. And even though they're not nearly as good as the original, I, I really do like his, his Total Recall remake. So he's a director I enjoy. I'm curious what this is going to be like. Furiosa, the spinoff prequel origin story of the Furiosa character from Mad Max Fury Road that was played by Charlize Theron. Now it's going to be played by Anya Taylor-Joy. I really like her. I like the fact that Chris Hemsworth is in here as a villain. Uh, I'm curious about it. You know, I, I wasn't blown away by the trailer. I also wasn't offended by the trailer. There was a lot of weird controversy around that, but I like the Mad Max universe quite a bit. I loved Fury Road. I'm ready to see more in this world. You have The Fall Guy, which is, seems like a really fun little action comedy with Ryan Gosling, and uh, you have him as a stuntman that has to kind of go into this real world action scenario to save the star of his movie. Looks like it could be a lot of fun. And finally, the movie that was basically number 11, and I only kicked it off just to, to make room for something to have a little bit more variety in my top 10, is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I love the original. I really, really enjoyed Ghost, uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I'm ready to see them do a completely new story because Afterlife had a lot of nostalgia. You know, you had uh, Gozer coming back and a lot of things that were just direct callbacks to the first film. Some would say too much. I think it was a good amount. And this one is obviously a brand new story, brand new villain, brand new direction. And the trailer has really sold me. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And now that we're done with my honorable mentions, really quick before we kick into my actual top 10, while you guys are going to be surfing online for the information of all of these 20 or so movies I've talked about in this video, it's going to be much more enjoyable when you know that you are surfing online safely. So check out the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Have you ever Googled yourself and been shocked to find out how much of your personal information is just readily available for anyone to see on these public listing sites? True story, a couple of years ago, I got a phone call from somebody who was like, oh my God, you're my favorite YouTuber. I can't believe I have your personal phone number. 
And while we're talking about phone calls, are you sick of having constant spam phone calls to where you don't even pick up your phone anymore? The unfortunate reality is that data brokers make a fortune selling all of your personal information to robocallers and spammers or anybody that wants to know more about you including where you live. Well, the sponsor of today's video, Aura, is here to help by identifying whatever data brokers are leaking your personal information and even submitting opt-out requests on your behalf. Legally, these data brokers do have to remove your personal information if you ask them to, but they make it extremely difficult to ask. So why not let Aura do the hard work for you? Aura also protects you while surfing online with parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, and even identity theft insurance and it's all located in one app for an affordable price. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so that you can focus on your everyday life with peace of mind. You can either let people continue to exploit and profit off of your personal information, or you can go to Aura.com slash Cody Leach or click the link in the video description to start your two week free trial. That's Aura.com slash Cody Leach or click the link in the video description to start a two week free trial. And thank you to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Coming in at number 10 is a movie that was supposed to be released last year, but got delayed to 2024, and that is The Bike Riders. Now, I have not watched much of the trailer because it just seemed like one of those trailers where I was sold immediately, didn't want to see anything else. Uh, from what I gather on it, it is about a biker gang. It's a period piece to a certain extent. You got Austin Butler in here, hot off of his trail with Elvis. You got Tom Hardy, uh, a number of other actors that I really enjoy. And it's directed by the guy who directed Mud, which I absolutely love. So being a subject matter that I really enjoy, you know, big Sons of Anarchy fan, this is the drama of the year that I already know enough about to be highly anticipating it. I really like stories that are taking place within a, a gang or within a mob. You got things like Goodfellas and even kind of the, the cornier ones out there like Deuces Wild. I, I just like those types of movies and this seems like it's gonna be a really nice addition to that subgenre. Coming in at number nine is gonna be Joker Foley Adu, the sequel to the Todd Phillips film Joker that released got Best actor for Joaquin Phoenix, got a bunch of Oscar consideration. It's the only R-rated movie in history to make over a billion dollars. I really enjoyed the first one. And so while it's a movie, I don't I don't quite see the, the path to a sequel because a lot of the merit of that first film kind of relies on you not knowing whether or not it's reality or it's in its head. And and uh, I think following up on that could cloud that a bit by by giving us definitive answers. But then again, you know, I enjoyed what they brought to the first film. I have no reason to expect anything negative from this second film. You have the addition of Lady Gaga here as Harley Quinn, which is a really interesting casting. Of course, we all love Margot Robbie, but I'm sure Lady Gaga is going to bring something really interesting. Uh, and the fact that they said that it's going to be a musical is the one thing that really kind of gives me pause and why it's probably lower on this list than it would have been. Because, as I've said numerous times, I'm not a fan of musicals. Char uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's the only one that I've ever loved. So if there's musical elements here and there that, you know, Lady Gaga, I'm sure, is, especially is going to shine in those. That's fine. If the whole movie is a musical, I, I don't know. It might not be for me, but I'm very curious to see what this is going to turn out to be. Number eight is going to be Bad Boys 4. It's a shame that they called the third one Bad Boys for Life because you could have easily just put the little number thing in there. And, you know, the fourth movie, the title writes itself. But whatever. We have Bad Boys 4. I really enjoy all three of these movies. I actually thought that the third one from a couple of years ago was the best of the bunch, and I would have never expected that. I know Will Smith is in this really weird limbo right now where, you know, it, it, you don't really know whether the world is going to forgive him and, or let him forget or if they're just going to hold him accountable for that for the rest of his career. I really don't know either. <laughs> so I guess we'll find out when this movie comes out, if it performs anywhere near as good as the third film did. But uh yeah, I like this series. I like those two characters together. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence have great chemistry. I love good old fashioned action movies and buddy cop movies. Bad Boys is one of my favorite versions of that subgenre. So even before seeing a trailer or knowing anything about the plot, I'm excited for this one. Number seven is another film that I thought I was going to see last year and got delayed to this year, but it's not too far away. And that's Dune 2. Now, I wasn't really on the hype train for the original Dune. Uh, I've never read the book. I never watched the original film. It never really seemed like something that was going to appeal to me. And while I absolutely respect the hell out of uh, Denny Villeneuve as a director, the subject matter and the types of the pacing of his movies, usually the, the, he doesn't make movies that I tend to love. I always watch them once. I'm like, yeah, that was really good. And then I never really rewatched them again. 
And with the way that Blade Runner 2049 went down, where everybody was on this huge hype train saying this is going to be a billion dollar movie, this is going to be the best movie of the year and the highest grossing. And then it just unfortunately never found its audience. I was actually su suspecting that that was going to be the case for Dune. And luckily it wasn't because it was only going to be part one of the story. I walked in, not super excited, walked out absolutely in love with that world and could not wait to see that story concluded. Uh, I'm trying my best to stay away from any spoilers for the original story or the original film. I kind of want to walk into this one as blind as possible. Hopefully I'll be able to maintain that. But yeah, I loved the the really wild sci-fi world that they built. I really liked the cast of the original. I liked the different characters. I think that they told a really interesting, isolated story for a part one while setting up so many things that I can't wait to see paid off. I did watch the first trailer that they released for Dune 2 and when they show Timothy Chalamet about to like <laughs> do some sand surfing with that gigantic worm like yes this thing is going to be epic coming in at number six is going to be Nosferatu the newest Robert Eggers film that is currently slated to be released on Christmas which that's going to be a Christmas present for me uh, so Robert Eggers is a director that I I've had an interesting history with so far the witch is a movie that much like with some of Villeneuve's movies I would say I respect more than I enjoy uh, the Lighthouse, I hated, but I really enjoyed The Northman. And his style, the aesthetic that he brings, the way that he always focuses on this period piece kind of angle, the cast that he usually is able to gather together and the performances that he gets out of them. When I see Robert Eggers' name attached to Nosferatu, I'm instantly interested. I didn't even need to know anything else beyond that. But you start to find out about the cast. You got Bill Skarsgård playing Count Orlock. You've got Willem Dafoe in here. You got Nicholas Holt. I mean, I'm sold. And I can already envision this movie being like the film that finally gets vampire movies back into the the respect in the horror genre that it deserves you know we have that stink of the twilight saga that's still kind of wafting in the air we haven't seen too many vampire films in recent memory because of that we started to see a few of them trickle out over the past couple of years like with renfield and voyage of the demeter and a couple of others but this is the one that's high profile enough to where if it delivers i could see this rejuvenating the entire vampire subgenre in horror and i cannot wait for that number five is the one that has the most potential to just absolutely destroy my heart and that is beverly hills cop axel f i don't really like that title either why did you just call it beverly hills cop four why do you got to throw the the title of the the theme song and that just it's weird nonetheless there's a lot of reasons to be concerned about this movie. And, uh, you know, I hesitated even putting it on this list because of all that. But I can't deny that that trailer got me pumped. I thought the trailer was put together really nicely. The action looks good. The fact that so many cast members are coming back from the original movies really warms my heart. It seems like Eddie Murphy is just slipping back into that role, which is nice to see. Now, the trailer doesn't show much as far as his comedy side of things, uh, but it worked to get those nostalgia juices flowing. And man, as soon as you started to hear that theme song, I, I just got pumped and excited. And I was like, please, when do I get to watch this movie? This has been something that's been in development hell for maybe as long as I've been on YouTube or longer. Like there was a TV series where he was going to be the chief and his son was going to take over as kind of the protagonist role. It shot a pilot, never got picked up. Uh, I've seen various announcements over the years that a, a fourth film is coming and then nothing ever came of it. Now we have Netflix officially bringing this to us, which is the biggest part of concern for me, because while Netflix has given us some great films, they've given us a lot, a lot of dog shit. Uh, and coming to America, that was a movie I couldn't even finish. And I, I felt kind of the same way as far as just excitement and nostalgia juices, the way that that trailer came out as I did with this one. So I'm worried. <laughs> and also with the trailer ending on this film has yet to be rated. I'm like, don't you fucking dare give me a PG 13 Beverly Hills cop movie. Cause if, if that happens, this will instantly drop out of this list. You, you can't have Axel Foley and handcuff him to where you can't swear. You can't do it. So this could go either way. <laughs> this could, easily just be on my most surprising of the year by the end of 2024 or my most disappointing of the year and be very high on those lists but whew, I'm, I'm trying to have faith here i'm trying to have faith i'm trying to will it into existence for this to finally 
be the rejuvenation that classic Eddie Murphy needs in this world. Number four, we got Deadpool 3, the only comic book film coming out this year that I'm interested in, and I kind of wish it was the only comic book film, period, because, guys, I need a break. Like, I love the MCU, I loved a lot of the DC movies, I loved the Fox X-Men universe and everything, and I was riding the high along with everybody whenever these films were just kicking ass left and right, but... The past couple of years have just broke me, especially with Marvel, where I, I, I just need a break. N no more shows, no more movies. Just give us like a year. Just let us take a fucking breath. So I'm a little bit relieved that uh, this is the only one that we got coming out, although there's a lot of people who are disappointed. But Deadpool 3 could go either way for me. Uh, I, I've been really anticipating seeing how they're going to continue this franchise because I, I love the first film. I really like the second one, not nearly as much as the first one, but they've taken enough time to where I feel like they're not rushing into a sequel. The fact that they were bringing back Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, I, I was a little mixed on that because Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, that that's my favorite performance in comic book history. Like the, the, as far as a actor embodying a comic book character, to me, he's the best. But Logan was a fantastic, if not perfect way to send off Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And regardless if this is in a timeline that's going to mess with that or not, just the fact that he's coming back again does take something away from the emotional satisfaction that we had with Logan. So I'm a little worried about that while I'm excited for the potential of seeing him just being able to let loose in, a, in rated R form, cut people to pieces and have a lot of back and forth uh, with Ryan Reynolds. I am also probably mostly worried about the multiverse stuff. Now, I, this is a film where I feel like by the time it comes out, we're probably going to know most of the surprises and cameos and jokes that they have planned because fucking scoopers and news outlets just can't help but display everything about this movie. So by the end of it, I don't know how effective that side of the movie is going to be, how much they're actually going to be able to keep secret. I did like the fact that Ryan Reynolds started to play into it and just started leaking photos himself that were fake with like the Predator was in there and shit like that, just to kind of add even more ridiculousness to the mix to where it's like, OK, well, if we're going to spoil actual shit, we might as well just put a whole bunch of shit that's not in the movie and maybe that'll save it. And we'll see if it does. But uh, yeah, this this again, much like with Beverly Hills Cop, this could easily end up on my most disappointing of the year if they fumble the ball. Uh, but I'm really curious what's going to happen with it. And curious how Marvel is going to be able to handle it. And Disney going to be able to handle a rated R film. So we'll see. Number three is going to be Alien Romulus. This is the upcoming Fide Alvarez film that was a similar path to Prey from two years ago, where it was supposed to be, I believe, a Hulu exclusive. And this one's actually going to be getting a theatrical release, which I wish Prey would have gotten because it certainly merited it. But I love everything about what I know with this project. You know, Alien is one of those franchises that has gone off the rails a couple of times. Uh, I love the first two. I get a lot of fun out of the fourth one, but admittedly, that's a very bad movie. Uh, but I am not one who really cared much for what Ridley Scott did with his um, Prometheus films and Alien Covenant. I, I just I would have liked to have seen that trilogy concluded just to have a complete story. But I was not really on board with what he was doing. And this seeming like it's going back to basics. It's going back to the the low or mid-budget like horror route. You get somebody like Fide Alvarez in there who has done a phenomenal job so far with things like his Evil Dead film and Don't Breathe. And I, I'm really, really intrigued to see what this is going to be. And I think that this, this prey model of doing a, a mid-budget, scaled down, just really good isolated story is the best way to rejuvenate some of these franchises that have been struggling to do blockbuster style films like Predator, Alien, Terminator. None of them have ever really been able to replicate the success of the first or first couple of movies because they just kind of have lost sight of what made them great. This seems to have what made the Alien films great completely in its sights. I hope it's going to be tense. I hope it's going to be scary. I hope it's going to be bloody. I hope that it gives some a really interesting piece of the storyline that, that doesn't rely on Ripley or doesn't rely on the origin of things like the Prometheus trilogy, just an isolated alien movie that's executed right. Mr. Alvarez, 
bring it home, sir. Number two for me is going to be Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And this is one that the trailer I thought looked awesome. I'm absolutely on board for continuing on past that original trilogy, which is damn near a perfect trilogy. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is one of my favorite films of all time. I think that's like in my top 15 at least. And I think that it's been enough time to where you can effectively branch off and continue the storyline past those three movies and do something different, which it seems like they're doing. It's going to be all apes. You know, humans are pretty much eradicated at this point, except for maybe being the slaves that they end up being in the original Planet of the Apes movie. Uh, but you have like these different factions or these different tribes within the ape kingdom. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of deceit and politics and stuff in there. And I'm all for it. It looks awesome. It sounds awesome. Uh, of course, it not having the same creative team as the original trilogy does give me a little bit of pause, but I have faith that they wouldn't hand it to people that they think would fumble the ball. So this one is, is very high up here. This is one that I cannot wait to see. But my number one is Maxine. This is a horror film that's going to be the third and I believe final chapter in the X trilogy. So from 2022, we had X and we had Pearl. And this is going to be a... 80s slasher film uh, that's going to be having a, a lot of giallo references or giallo style to it apparently look it doesn't really matter what the story is what the style is what the premise is what promises they give us as long as it's another chapter in this x trilogy I i'm absolutely there x was by far one of the biggest surprises of that year and ended up being my second favorite film of the year I really loved Pearl, too. I think that also made my top 10. If Maxine is just this much worse than Pearl, even if it's the least good of the three for me personally, if it's just this much worse than Pearl, I think we have one of the greatest trilogies in horror history. So can't wait to see what this is going to end up being. All the descriptions that we're getting so far with the 80s style, it taking place in Hollywood, even though I'm not really a Jalo guy, seeing somebody like Ty West take on that is going to be really interesting. You got a really cool cast here. I think Kevin Bacon is in there. He's always a seal of approval for horror for me. So this one easily is the one of these 10 where if I had like a little guy in the back corner in the alley who had like a jacket full of Blu-rays and was like, which one do you want to watch? You can only pick one. Maxine would be the one that I would pick. That's my most anticipated film of 2024. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Let me know if you enjoyed it. And if you did, please click over here for all of my 2024 new release reviews so far. I'm also going to put that gigantic video where I ranked all the films from last year for you to check out. Make sure you carve out some time for that one or listen to it while you're doing something else. Like, share, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss everything for the rest of this year. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.